Board of City Council meeting of April 11th, 2022. Ms. Hunt, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Carter? Present. Mr. Young? Present. Mr. Walters? Here. Ms. Cleland McGrath? Here. Ms. Moulton? Here. Mr. McDougall? Here. Ms. Hubick? Here. Thank you. Would you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, uh, announcements, uh, we're on to item number three, announcements and committee reports. Uh, first, uh, one COVID announcement. Uh, I didn't have my notes, but I remember that Island Hospital has zero COVID patients. That's good news. And also the hospital numbers continue to decline from a high of 35.3 per 100,000 to now 1.5, and that's Skagit County numbers. Had a uh, great spring uh, cleanup event. It was thanks for uh, letting me wander around all the trash at the ops department uh, on Saturday. It's a great service that we provide to the community. Hopefully for our residents, you have the opportunity to take advantage of that. And I have a Arbor Day proclamation to read. And it reads, City of Anacortes proclamation, Arbor Day, April 13th, 2022. Whereas Arbor Day means tree in Latin, Arbor Day is a special day that has been set aside for planting and caring for trees. And whereas this year marks the 150th anniversary of Arbor Day, which was first celebrated by J. Sterling Morrison to encourage his fellow Nebraskans to plant trees to beautify and enrich their state. And whereas all 50 states and Countries throughout the world celebrate this holiday every spring to teach children the importance of forestry and whereas Anacortes has been recognized by the National Arbor Day Foundation as a tree city USA for the 20th consecutive year and whereas the tree planting this year will be held at 28th Street Playground April 13th to help improve our urban forest. Now, therefore, be it resolved, it is fitting and appropriate that I, Matt Miller, Mayor of Anacortes, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, April 13th, 2022, as our celebration of Arbor Day in Anacortes and encourage our citizens to plant trees, thus leaving a legacy for present and future generations. All right, moving on to item 3B, Public Safety Committee. Ms. Cleland McGrath. Sure, so we had a public safety committee on April 5th, um, and Ms. Hubick and Mr. Carter, and I, no, Mr. Carter wasn't there. Hubick and I were there. Um, <clears throat> a pretty short meeting, uh, Chief Harris from the fire department talked a little bit about um, the boat that they are going to acquire from Guimas Island and talking to the port about figuring out how to have a boat slip that's accessible and possibly uh, working out a, a, a nice arrangement with the port. Um, we are sorry to see uh, Assistant Chief Walsh. Um, he has left and on his last day was I think Friday um, and he is moving down to become Chief of South Whidbey. So we're sorry to see him go, but we've also received uh, four to five good applicants um, and they're gonna review at the end of this month. Um, we've had two lateral employees move over, one fire and one EMT. Um, we talked a little bit about Skagit 911 Dispatch Center. Um, there is some major kind of deferred um, infrastructure improvements that have not happened, and so they will be probably coming to council at the end of this month to discuss what our options are and how we will fund that. Um, and then finally, Chief Floyd talked a little bit about our animal control ordinance. There was some gray area on how um, we handle animal, the, the code um, when it comes to dangerous or potentially dangerous animals. Um, and so we're working on making it clearer and more enforceable. So that, will, that draft will probably come to council around April 18th. I think that's about it. Okay, thank you. Planning Committee. Mayor Miller. Ms. Bolton. 
Thank you. The planning committee met at 5 p.m. today, Ms. Cleland McGrath, Mr. Walters, and staff and I. We also had some guest members today. There's a group that formed last year that is, um, is pursuing Main Street. Um, it's a Main Street program. It's a national program. And its goal is to revitalize and um, preserve downtown areas. So for example, Mount Vernon has one, Coopville has one, and they've been successful around the country in, in achieving their aims and also getting funding to help preserve and sustain downtown economies. So they've done a ton of work so far. They've been incorporated. They have a board. They're a 501c3, and they've been recognized as an affiliate, which is their first step. Um, so what they want to do is keep city council and the public apprised of their efforts as they move forward and as they as they create their strategic vision and plan. So they're very well organized and we'll be hearing more about their efforts um, in the future. So um, it could be a really great thing for the city to work in tandem with us, um, with the public, with the port, with the chamber and, um, and various stakeholders just for the general good of the city. So it's pretty exciting. Um, the other thing that we spend a little bit of time on is um, there is some property on Fifth Street that's owned by the city that gives access to Cap Santa and the amphitheater. And so there have been some questions there about boundaries and, and things that have been kind of built in city property and improving public access there and for um, neighborhood harmony also. So planning staff's been working on that for quite a while and um, have some good plans that they're communicating with the, with the neighborhood that will um, add some clarity to that area and will be for the general good. So good job, planning department. And that's it for now. Thanks. All right, thank you. Any other uh, announcements or committee reports? Okay, moving on to item four, public comment. This is the time on the agenda where we open it up for any members of the public that wish to address the council on any items that are not on our agenda. And I need to check online participants. We have, oh, yep, come on up. All right, I'm going to check online participants while you're coming up to uh, address the council. And can you make sure the, um, the microphone is on? And Hi there. Yeah, there we go. I'm Sandra Benton of 1717 9th Street. I'm also a founding board member of the Downtown Anacortes Alliance. So on the heels of Carolyn's comments and report on the meeting earlier today, I'd like to um, present the council with some Wonderful Mac rack cards. Um, we don't have our um, business cards in yet, but um, the downtown anacortesalliance.org is visible online, and we would just invite everybody to go online and check it out. And I'd like to um, present this to the city council right now. Sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, any other members of the audience here want to address the council? And our online participants showing two attendees. Okay, moving on to our consent agenda, item five. Council. Mayor Miller. Ms. Moulton. I move to approve items Five, all of them on the consent agenda, five A through eight, A through D. Second. Okay, a motion by Ms. Moulton, a second by Mr. Carter to approve consent agenda items A through D. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Moving on to item 6A. Uh, public hearing. This is a public hearing, City Council Ward Redistricting Plan, and I think we're going to hear uh, briefly from Mr. Hoagland. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council, and members of the audience. Uh, I just wanted to share real quickly before you open the public hearing, um, 
This is uh, the web page that we set up for the redistricting that the city council is considering right now. There's um, a variety of links on there to the statutes that drive this, the census where the data comes from, um, the material that we went over with council a week or two ago was also on there. Um, and there's a link to the schedule here. So I would just point out briefly, here we are on April 11th, the public, public hearing. Uh, we do have a public comment period that's open through the end of the week. Uh, if we receive any um, comments that need to be considered in terms of uh, the direction the plan goes, we'll make those edits in the next week or so with the intent of being back to council on the 25th. We also included a draft resolution in the packet tonight. Um, and with no changes, if there are no changes between now and then, that's what will be coming back in a couple of weeks. Okay, and this is our second uh, public hearing on this. And any members of the public wish to address the council on our plan to not do any redistricting? Okay, so we'll uh, keep this open until uh, Mr. Walters. Uh, thank you. Um, I would just ask that the resolution that we adopt be adjusted a little bit. The last line says that we continue to use the existing council ward boundaries. I think that makes sense because as we've seen, the population between those are almost identical. Um, but it says that the City of Anacortes redistricting plan is hereby adopted and it doesn't propose to attach any particular plan. So it seems like we could drop some of that text or we could attach a plan. If, if, if the plan is just a map, you know, it's just a little lack of clarity as currently constructed. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Absolutely. All right, thank you for that input. All right, anything else before we move on to other business? All right, moving on to other business, item 7A. Waste Management Annual Report, and Mr. Buckemeyer, are you going to introduce this one? I'll speak slowly to give you some time to work your way up. Okay, Mr. Buckemeyer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I believe these folks are online, a representative of some uh, waste management to give us their annual update, and I believe one of them is uh, Hans, but I'm gonna wait for them to show up here. Uh, yeah, I think I got a Han. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. There we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Well, hello. Good evening, Mayor Miller and Council. It's very nice to meet you all. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to present our 2021 annual report. Um, my name is Han Kirkland, very masculine name, but <laughs> it is me. Um, and I'm the uh, contact manager for waste management. Um, as you know, West Waste Management has been collecting recycle and compost for residential, multifamily, and commercial properties in Anacortes since 2015. And uh, tonight I have Rob Rutledge with me. He is our district manager for Skagit and Marysville collection site. Um, he also has another council meeting after this, so he may not be able to stay for the entire time. <laughs> but he is joining me tonight. And as you know, as part of our municipal contract with the city of Anacortes, we do an annual report. And um, in Michelle's absence, I'm giving you that report tonight. So um, to give you a summary and exciting things that are coming up, um, as, a, as my job uh, as the contract manager, um, I work with city staff and customer service and operations to ensure that we're giving Anacortes the best possible service to residents and businesses in Anacortes. And um, I believe everyone should have gotten an annual report, but I also have a quick PowerPoint that um, I will share. Um, and hopefully it'll work. <laughs> and everybody can hear me. And, <laughs> and we can so, see it. Yay! <laughs> Success! Yeah, so this is our 2021 annual report. And we are a proud member of the Chamber of Commerce. And um, a supporter of the Anacortes Arts Festival um, in August. And as things open up, hopefully we'll be able to get out in person and um, do some more events. And so with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Rob to talk a little bit about our smart trucks. All 
right. Thank you, Han. Good evening, Mayor and, and Council members. Uh, yeah, I want to take this opportunity to highlight some of the investments that waste management has uh, put into our trucks, and one in particular, our smart truck technology. Uh, it, it really encompasses a, a strong focus on service and safety uh, with the company, which is two of our three pillars. And the smart truck program is an additional camera system that's been added to our trucks that allows us to have better visibility for each individual customer. From a service standpoint, uh, we put a humongous emphasis on contamination in our recycle line of business and yard waste line of business. And, and this allows us to identify on an individual basis customers that uh, need coaching or are identified with contamination that the drivers will tag uh, with what were called oops tags that the customer will see on their cart when they go to bring their carts back in as well as uh, our folks that review the video that can reach out to those customers to let them know what specifically we're seeing in those containers that is contaminating uh, and help correct and coach them what we can and can't take. Uh, the other aspect of Smart Truck that has uh, been a huge uh, game changer, if you want to call for our company, is the addition of it's uh, called DriveCam Third Eye. And that uses artificial intelligence that helps us have a better insight as to driver behaviors. So we put a lot of emphasis on our drivers being the safest drivers out there and in the industry. Um, these cameras allow us to identify if a driver is having distraction, whether it's eating or drinking, um, utilizing their cell phone, uh, departing their lane, following too close by sitting there, sending in little chimes to them with a little message stating, you know, following too close, distracted driving. No different than most cars this day and age with, with the technology and in, in artificial, intelligence, artificial intelligence in newer cars today. Um, if that behavior is not corrected, then it will send us videos, which allows us to proactively work with that driver to help uh, change that behavior and um, help ensure that we have the safest drivers out there in the industry. Um, so with this technology and the continued reinvestment by the company, this is just one small investment so far that the company's put in to improving the customer experience, improving contamination, and ensuring it's safe not only for our drivers, but the um, residents of Anacortes. Great. Thanks, Rob. And uh, this is a great time to delve into the Anacortes Recycling and Compost numbers. So the diversion numbers is uh, what you see here in tons is um, the amount of recycle and compost that we divert from the landfill. Um, and so uh, overall, um, looking at the report, it's a little down from last year but that's consistent with the rest of the area. And I think as we move towards people going back um, part-time or full-time, um, you see the numbers drop a little bit, but overall the city is doing really well with um, being consistently diverting um, material from the landfill. So um, we're always looking at different ways to try to increase our um, diversion rate uh, year over year. So. You know, as Rob says, you know, restaurants aren't back 100% um, in person. And so that affects the organics rates. And so um, I think uh, Anna Cordes is doing a great job. <laughs> and so um, with that, Rob, if you want to talk a little bit about our Cascade Recycling Center. Absolutely. So to help it continue to improve the diversion and to help with ensuring that we're we are putting out the cleanest product possible. Um, this year, by the end of 2022, Waste Management is uh, revamping its re recycle facility called CRC, which is located down in Woodenville, where all the recyclables uh, are transported down to uh, and processed. Um, we are adding 17, uh, the 17 machines that um, are improving the cleanliness of the recycled materials. We are, right now we have folks that work the sorting lines and that, that try to get out as much of the contamination as we can prior to it being processed, bailed, and then sent to uh, different manufacturers throughout the state as well as in North America. 
Um, by doing this, it'll help our throughput uh, to increase us to about 600 units um, per hour. So it, by improving our, not only our throughput, it'll improve the, the uh, processing and the cleanliness of the product to ensure everything we are sending out. It, we're, we're meeting the expectations of the manufacturers that we're sending this material to. Uh, waste management takes huge pride in acknowledging that all the plastics that we process do not leave uh, North America. And, and some of those products that get um, repurposed through the recycling of this is waste management's commitment to purchasing our uniforms now are made from recycled plastics, as well as eco carts, which are the carts that we've started purchasing within the last year uh, that are made from the same recycled products as well. So through new contracts and just routine maintenance on carts, those are the parts that we have coming in uh, that are being repurposed out into the public. Uh, it, it's just another way to, to show the importance of recycling and, and waste management's commitment to uh, the evolution of recycling and, and looking into the future and trying to be part of the future and the solutions moving forward. Very cool. Well, thank you, Rob. And I know you have another council meeting tonight. So if you have to drop off, no worries. I'll take it from here. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, council members, for your time tonight. Thanks, Rob. Yep. And then another cool thing was um, I had failed to mention was um, WM is the only hauler in Washington that has three different um, MRFs, the material recovery facilities. And so there's one in Woodinville, Spokane, and Tacoma. So. Um, we are open for in-person tours, so or virtually still, if um, that's still in, you know, you want to be socially distanced. So if anyone wants to come tour, just let me know and I can get it um, set up. We also have um, a virtual tour scheduled on Earth Day, so um, I can send you the link if you're interested in attending that. And so moving on, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our public education and outreach team. Um, so they monitor incidents of residential compost and recycling contamination. And it starts with the drivers tagging the carts. If they see visible contamination, they'll put the oops tags on. And then after three incidences, um, we do a phone call to just gently guide people um, into recycling right and making sure that their um, carts are clean. And so, um, and if, and we're always open to more um, multifamilies and commercial properties who may need a little help. So if anyone knows anyone who would like to um, have a little extra guidance, um, that would be wonderful. We also are offering it in different languages. Our materials are transcreated into Spanish and um, different languages. So um, always a great guide um, for, uh, for people. And so um, with that, uh, I wanted to direct you to our website, which is our number one source of information. Um, here, people can um, get the WM app, sign up for customer notifications and communication preferences, which will keep them in the loop in case we ever have any service issues or inclement weather. Um, they can get alerts on their phone. So um, I'll close with our accolades. We've been, uh, and I believe this year again, we've been named one of the world's uh, most ethical companies. And uh, and with that, <laughs> I'll open up to any questions if anyone has any uh, questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, council, questions? Mayor Miller. Mr. Walters. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Your slide deck that's in our packet has a slide talking about um, <clears throat> your textile recovery program, and also your CartWise app. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, um, we're doing more expansion into the whole textile, re, um, you know, uh, putting it back into um, the, uh, oh gosh, so sorry. Michelle is so good at this. And uh, <laughs> um, so what, we're doing is in um, some cities, we're doing multifamily um, recycling carts where you can recycle um, with, if you have a multi property manager on site, we have carts where you can recycle textiles there. Um, we're also working with different manufacturers to break down textiles so that um, 
you could uh, reuse all that material into new textiles instead of the typical sending it overseas or um, you know, sending it to different um, streams to be reused as rags. And so um, there's that for the textiles and the Cartwise program. I will have to get back, uh, back to you on that. Because I know like for us, when after we, re we take a cart out, like Robert was saying, we have, um, we use Cascade cart solutions to redeploy um, carts that are made out of um, reusable uh, recycled material. Yeah, my, I, I was wondering if we could take advantage of the textile recovery program, mm -hmm. maybe not by deploying carts to multifamily buildings, but just hosting a cart at, say, our, um, our road shop, or, mm -hmm. or being able to deploy the CartWise app um, locally here so that people can use an app or use some kind of interactive application to figure out how to recycle a, a difficult to recycle um, whatever. Yes, it, because yeah, and then there, there we also have um, resources online. I know on the King County where you could go in and just type in whatever that um, material that you're looking at um, that you could, and then it'll show you if that's recyclable, and, and I'll look into the recycling for you for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this, this item is open for public comment. Any members of the audience want to comment? Questions? Councilor? Hey, oh, Mr. Yeah. Young. Thank you. Um, let's see, Ms. Hahn, yeah. just, uh, you know, what I find so enormously um, good at this point is I like the reuse, that, like you were talking about, um, plastics do not leave uh, North America, repurposing into different items. Those are things that I am truly applauding waste management from uh, to be part of that extension services, because at the end of the day, you know, it's either that they're able to be recycled or they're not. And if they're not able to be recycled, then where are they going to go? They end up still in the landfill one way or the other. And so I, I think that as an industry of plastics and or materials, you know, I'm hoping that we as a country and as a people could do a better job of having choices to choose and deciding what we want to support. And I think right now in absence of as many choices as we would need for the products that are out there that are not recyclable, I, I do want to commend waste management for broadening their approach. I love the idea of repurposing. I love this idea that you're bringing forward now about textile. I love the idea of how you guys are using it, whether it's uniforms or whatever other capacities, because I'm watching other countries figuring out a way to use plastics and create another use or another life out of it. So I applaud that. And I, I do want to continue to encourage waste management for those product extensions, if you would, recycling extensions. And so thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, I think um, the driver's shirts were made out of 24 plastic bottles. And so very cool that we're kind of bringing it all full circle, you know, and um, finding different uses for plastics for sure. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Kirkland. I appreciate it and uh, look forward to uh, talking to you all in the future. Yes, thank you. All right, moving on to item 7B. And uh, the Anacortes, Access Anacortes Fiber Internet Update, Ms. Shu. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and it's really nice to have members of the audience as well tonight. I'm pleased to present the April 2022 monthly update on Access Anacortes Fiber Internet. Um, I'd, I'd like to start with this, pres or this slide first uh, to show a 13-month um, over month, um, just an uh, information about our customer account and also our revenue. 
So in April of 2021, we had 698 customers in service, bringing in a monthly revenue of $46,000. As of today, we have 1,223 customers in service, bringing in almost $79,000 a month. So we're seeing nice growth in, in the internet business. In terms of our customer orders, we are continuing to receive two to three orders a day, seven days a week. So there definitely is a, a need and an interest in our service. Um, I'm especially pleased that in each of the areas where we have current um, service is in, in available, that we are outpacing the 35% market share that our business model really needed to, to be successful. Um, and overall, citywide, including the areas where we're not offering service yet, uh, we have a 37% take rate. So I'm very pleased with, with that. I'm trying to find a, a way, and I'd be uh, open to your feedback and suggestions about how to, to show you the, the cash flows so that they're meaningful to you. Um, we are working uh, towards becoming uh, operationally po cash flow positive. Uh, January and February we were. We had a larger expenditure in March, and so we were not in March. But I am expecting that to, uh, by the end of the year, be um, consistently showing a positive cash flow. That is separate from our construction expenses, so um, operation and construction are, are different buckets. In the West End, this is a, a map of our current service area. The, the areas in green are um, lit up and ready for service and the areas in yellow is the, the entire area that we are, are building out right now. Those installations are going really well, and the number of orders that are coming out in on a regular basis um, keep us at having about 600 customers that we're still in queue in order to, to put in service. Um, what that means is if you get a phone call as a customer or a potential customer who has an order in from Kimberly Henry in our fiber office, return that call right away. Um, we're about three weeks out from the time that we reach out to you to when we can actually put you into service um, in terms of having orders and our installers busy with that. So uh, please uh, make, the, make that phone call right away to, to be able to get um, into to service more quickly. Mayor Miller. Mr. Walters. About how much longer till all the streets or 95% of the streets are lit up in the West End here? And so an RBC is, um, has a, about six to eight weeks left of um, trenching and pulling of MSTs, and then we're going through and following with the, the splicing. So they will be done with the majority of their work in the next six to eight weeks, and then we'll follow through with the, the splicing and be able to have that whole area in, in, in service. Thanks. We're continuing to work on some areas with securing easements on the, the private streets. Um, there are some areas that, that are either there are HOAs that are involved or that there's private streets where we need to, to put some type of vault um, on a private property. This is just a, another way of looking at the city of Anacortes and the four service um, areas as we've broken out the, the project. So the area in green, our current service area you're familiar with, those are our pilot areas. The Guaymas View is the area that the design work is underway, and we are in the process of um, putting together the request for proposal. Uh, great thanks to the engineering department for their assistance with that, um, and we expect that to, to go out in the next week or two. Legal is involved with that as, as well uh, for the, the Guaymas View civil work. We'll then enter into a separate contract uh, with a, a fiber um, fiber specific to, to put the MSTs in, in that, that area. Um, and then the, the West End, which is continuing to um, see more areas. This map will actually go live tomorrow, but I did want to present it to you tonight uh, because it includes some uh, newly updated areas where, we're, where we have service in place. In terms of the funding, 
the, the West End area is still being, um, the, the funding source through that is the general fund, um, also the Savvy Bank line of credit, and we um, are fortunate to have some of the American Recovery Plan Act money that came through the city um, being uh, diverted towards that project. In the EDA area, uh, we have secured a two, um, two and a quarter million dollar grant. We're actually going to be meeting with the EDA tomorrow on site here in Anacortes to, to go over that project. And we've been doing a lot of work through that. Uh, we're continuing the, the balance of that project will be funded through debt. And uh, we're also looking at um, and any other federal infrastructure loan options that may be available to, to offset those costs. In the Guaymas view, um, the project that, that we're working on this year for the, the build out, uh, the project will be funded through debt and we're looking at federal infrastructure loan options and I probably should have added here as well that we'll be applying for a 0.09 uh, economic development grant through Skagit County. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we've had some really great community partnerships through the public library who is helping um, to, to, to display the, the, and was our first kind of customer um, where people could go and try out the, the access fiber internet. That the public, when you go and use a public computer at the, the library that is on the access fiber internet. Um, but they're also helping just to, to showcase that. Um, the Anacorta Senior Activity Center, last month I mentioned that they were doing a cutting the cord program, and that's something that they do on a quarterly basis. Well, we've mentioned it out in the community, and it was so popular that they had to add a second day. So it ran for two days in a row last week, and I know that they have uh, that, that occurring on a regular basis, and our representatives from the city are participating in that um, part of that presentation. So we want to make sure that our services are accessible and available to, to everybody. And then if people have questions about, well, what does this mean? What does it mean to cut the cord? That they are well informed and not surprised. We have a lot of work that's going on behind the scenes. Um, really, this, this is a citywide project. Um, we couldn't do it without the, the support of the other departments in the city, from the finance, legal, public works, library, museum. I mean, it really, everybody is uh, putting forth effort to, to make this a successful project. Um, and we're spending a lot of time in, in team meetings and in-person meetings, uh, uh, just ensuring that we have everything in place. Uh, a lot of work is being done in securing easements, reviewing that all of the plats um, that where the EDA work is being done is occurring in the right of way, or that we have easements secured in those areas. Um, as I mentioned, the EDA representatives will be, the Economic Development Administration representatives will be in Anacortes tomorrow. They want to look firsthand at our project area and just talk about the, the process of the, utilizing those federal funds. And this week, we'll be submitting an application to, to Skagit County for their 0.09 grant. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. OK, uh, this item is open for public comment. Members of the public, council, questions, comments? OK, thank you, Ms. Shu. Moving on to the, Mr. McDougall, did you have a comment? Okay, I thought you were sure. Just giving a thumbs up. Okay, great. Great stuff, thank you, Ms. Shu. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item 7C, resolution 3079, uh, to forgive the Wilson Hotel loan. This is a discussion and possible action item. Discussion is gonna be led by Mr. Hoagland. And I'm pleased to see a number of members from the Anacortes Housing Authority Board. And Brian, good to see you all here. Mr. Hoagland. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of slides I'll go through for some uh, background information on where we're at with this funding. Uh, so back in 2005, the city worked with the Anacortes Housing Authority to redevelop the Wilson Hotel to what it is now, a multi-use uh, building that includes affordable housing units. The city um, provided $270,000 towards the project in the form of a loan, and that loan came from the city's CDBG uh, funding source, the block grant. Um, and at the 
time, the funds were loaned to the Housing Authority, but it could have been passed through as a pass-through grant. The uh, original note, uh, it's included in the council packet, the promissory note, um, outlined the repayment schedule, which was 50% of the net cash flow of the project. Since the beginning of the loan, March of 2006, there have been six principal payments totaling $110,776. The note balance is $160,912. If you do the math on that, it does add up to more than $270,000. Uh, the first year of the loan, the loan also requires annual simple interest payment. So the first year of the loan, that interest payment wasn't made. The city, city added it to the principal balance, and that's why uh, it's slightly higher than that. Um, so those monies that come back from the principal payments are considered program income. or they, If they exceed $25,000, they are considered program income from the CDBG grant, and they fall under the same rules of use that that grant has. Um, our staff has uh, talked with HUD about this, um, and they have directed that this, the, the loan is under the city council authority and can be forgiven if desired. Uh, as you are, are aware, the Housing Authority is working on two different affordable housing projects that the city is participating in through the affordable housing sales tax and the uh, tax credit, the affordable housing tax credit that the city gets back from the state. So this um, idea of canceling the loan came up um, some time ago. We started working on this, on this last year. It's been through the, um, I, I believe, both the Finance Committee and the Hacks Committee. It would, um, cancellation of this loan would alleviate a fiscal burden that the Housing Authority has and allow them to concentrate those resources on their existing projects to further promote uh, affordable housing in the city. So I'd be happy to answer questions that you might have. Mr. Walters. We, we did review this in a couple of different committees and well, maybe one of the un understated things here is that um, when we receive revenue back from payments on the loan as program income, we've then got to amend our CDBG plan, figure out an appropriate project to spend that money on. In the past, staff have really scraped the bottom of the barrel trying to figure out what projects are um, appropriate for our, our annual allocation of CDBG monies. So the best use of this money is um, the Housing Authority project, uh, just as an outright grant rather than keeping accountants busy. Um, I think also implicit here is that the Housing Authority is doing great work and they are leading two of the three projects funded by that housing affordable, affordable housing sales tax. Um, their townhouse project well underway uh, and you can see it at, at 19th and O. What they've accomplished at the Wilson I think is similar to what hopefully gets accomplished at the Olson building uh, as part of that whole program. Um, and preserving our history while assisting those in need in our community. So we've given a, quite a bit of money to the Family Center, which is also a beneficiary of affordable housing sales tax, and where we have opportunities to assist the Housing Authority, who have in some ways kind of a heavier lift with the, their next project, the Olson Building, we should take whatever opportunity we can. Okay. Uh, this. Item is open for public comment. If any members of the audience would like to comment. Council, any other comments, questions? Mayor Miller. Ms. Hubick. Hi, thank you. Um, need to make a note for the record that because I am an appointed commissioner for the Housing Authority Board and sit on that board, I will need to recuse myself from tonight's discussion and vote, please. Thank you. Mayor Miller. Mr. Young. Now, thank you. I, I just want to echo the sentiment about the hard work that's been going into trying to ensure that not only do we have adequate housing, but we have affordable housing. And there's been a tremendous amount of work by a lot of people. Um, the Housing Authority is just one of those places that I'm delighted to support this initiative as we move forward in trying to provide housing for so many that need it. And uh, I'm just offering my support at this point.
Mayor Miller. Ms. Moulton. I would like to move to approve resolution 3079 for giving the balance of the Wilson Hotel loan. Second. Second. All right, there was a bunch of seconds in there, but I've got a uh, motion by Ms. Moulton, and the first second I heard was by Mr. Walters to approve resolution 3079 to forgive the Wilson Hotel loan. Ms. Hunt, would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Walters? Yes. Ms. Cleland McGrath? Yes. Ms. Moulton? Yes. Mr. McDougall? Yes. Ms. Hubick? Recused. Mr. Carter? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on to item 7D, ordinance 4020, an interim ordinance extending ordinance 3097, 3054, 3069, and 3076, uh, and 388, a moratorium on the acceptance of certain land use applications in the R4 use zone west of commercial use zone. Mr. Miesmer. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council and the audience. Ordinance 4020 would immediately extend the moratorium on accepting land use applications for building permits in the R4 use zone west of the commercial use zone proposing to use the bonus site provisions of 19.42.050C and of course municipal codes. That section relates to using 25% of the total units, not more than 600 square feet, which would allow an additional 10 foot onto the 40 foot up to 50 foot in the R4 use zone. The moratorium does not apply to the affordable units portion of, of that section of the code. The staff have started working with makers to develop a housing action plan, which includes um, taking a look at the R4 use zone and the commercial use zone, the bonus heights that are allowed in the R4 use zone in relationship to that 600 square foot unit. And part of that would include, you know, what might the alternatives be if that bonus height stays in place. Um, city staff will return to City Council within the next 60 days with a resolution confirming the ordinance and a work plan um, to describe our proposal for moving forward and getting this finally finished up this year. And I know that we've extended this a few times and we're asking Council to extend this moratorium one more time. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Miesmer. And, and yes, I know, Council, you're thinking, yes, we've ex extended this a lot, but we do have a, a kind of a good opportunity that's actually lining up with makers to help us finally wrap, wrap this one up and, uh, and get it back in front of you all. So with that, I think this is open for public comment. Any members of the audience like to comment on this item? Okay, Council, over to you. Mr. Walters. Um, it, it's entirely appropriate to extend it because we haven't finished our work on dealing with the moratorium that we already have in place. Uh, I'm also supportive of the holistic conversation that we're going to be engaging in as a community as part of our housing action plan, which is the appropriate place. I'm glad that staff brought that forward. I think that's the appropriate place to have this conversation about the height, bonus height moratorium. So I move approval of ordinance 4020. Okay, I've got a motion by Mr. Walters, a second by Mr. Carter to approve ordinance 4020. Ms. Hunt, would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Walters? Yes. Ms. Cleveland McGrath? Yes. Ms. Moulton? Yes. Mr. McDougall? Yes. Ms. Hubick? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. We're moving on to item 7E, Contract Award, 32nd Street and M Avenue Intersection Improvements Project. Mr. Buckemeyer. <laughs> thank you, Mayor, Council, and uh, members of the audience. Strikes me this could be the last time I get to ask for a contract approval, so this is going to be... Good. Unless we try to hold a special meeting to drag you in front of council do. again. So. Yeah, thanks for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> okay, so for your consideration this evening is a contract award for 32nd and M Avenue intersection improvements. Uh, a little bit of background. We opened bids on this on January 27th of this year. Um, there were six bids received. The apparent 
Uh, lowest bidder was determined to be non-responsive because of, they didn't provide an, a required form with their bid proposal. So uh, Cola Curcio Brothers Incorporated was determined to be the lowest responsive, responsible bidder. The engineer's estimate for this project was one point, call it 1.4 million. Uh, their bid is $889,822.50. Um, the project on our end is going to be headed up by Steve Lang. Uh, he's going to be our project manager. Um, then the project is basically to build a, a, a roundabout at the intersection of 32nd and M along with all of the stuff that goes, that goes, with, uh, goes with roundabouts. The um, nice thing about this is that all of the construction costs of this project are covered by grant money, so there won't be no City of Anacortes money in construction. We have a little bit in construction management, but not in the construction itself. So. And let's see, did I miss anything? Nope. Questions? Thank you. And this is just a reminder for the public that might be listening. This project got moved up uh, into this year because, again, the opportunity for uh, full, full grant funding. Um, so, again, we're, we're taking advantage of improving that intersection. Council, over to you all for questions, comments. Mr. Walters. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I think that um, we're all familiar enough with this project and because it's Mr. Buckenmeyer's last, I, I kind of feel like we should vote it down. <laughs> um, but, but seriously, I, I, I think that we, we would benefit maybe from the council retreat that we're going to have here on Friday, um, talking about what if we did want to make a different choice in projects like this? Because we've, we've approved this project in a number of places mm -hmm. along the way, uh, even more than what's described in the agenda bill. And, uh, in some cases, we, we might not want to go with the engineer's recommendation, and we might want to do something else. And so I, I think it would behoove us to be thinking in terms of how we might do, pursue some kind of process improvement where we might um, have a preliminary conversation about what we want to do at an intersection or a road improvement okay, or a street improvement or something like that before we get too far along in... Um, complete design and applying for grants and mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. And maybe that conversation could be part of the capital facilities plan or separate from that. Mr. Buckenmeyer is now thinking, I'm glad I'm out of here. I don't have to <laughs> sit around for any of this kind of thing. But, um, you know, the situation may arise in the future where we might want to have a more detailed conversation about what direction the city wants to go in, separate from engineering uh, judgment. Otherwise, um, I would move approval of the contract as presented. Thank you. Second. Okay, I've got a motion from Mr. Walters, a second from Ms. Moulton to award the contract for 32nd Street and M Avenue intersection improvements, project 19-002-TRN-003. Ms. Hunt, would you call for the vote, please? Ms. Clayla McGrath? Yes. Ms. Moulton? Yes. Mr. McDougall? Yes. Ms. Hubick? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Walters? Yes. Motion carries. All right, unanimous, thank you. Okay, well, maybe you shouldn't leave just yet, um, but you can, ha yeah, go ahead and have a seat. We're gonna move on to the item that you all have been waiting for, item 7F. Honoring Retiring Public Works Director Fred Buckemeyer. This is an action item because we're going to have some action. Um, so I'm going to start by saying a few words and uh, then perhaps we'll give uh, Fred some time to say some parting shots and then uh, there's a little presento at the end that I'm going to um, ha pass off to you. So Fred has served the City of Anacortes for 17 years and he has served as Public Works Director for the last 13 years, and he will retire on the 15th of April, that's this Friday. Started his career as a land surveyor in 1978. Did that for a few years before being hired by the city of Mount Vernon, where he spent just over 20 years in various roles, including, I think I have this correct, and as an engineering tech, a project engineer, engineering services manager. 
And then Anna Cordes had the good sense to hire him in 2004 as a city engineer for capital and development services. He was then promoted to deputy public works director, I think in September of 06, and then as public works director in March of 07. So with nearly 40 years of public service uh, on behalf of the staff and behalf of the citizens of Anacortes, thank you very much for your service and uh, we can't thank you enough for uh, what you've done. So I will uh, maybe at this point, um, I will, I guess I'll, I'll just go right into, you know, you've got a great team of managers and a great staff <laughs> and that great staff, I think, has really what has given you a, a big head. <laughs> and that big head, representing by 20 years of photographs. <laughs> and get, get the picture, Nikki. <laughs> Are you getting his head in the foreground? Yeah. That's how you get contracts approved. <laughs> okay. Fred, uh, council, if you have any other parting words for Fred, um, we're going to let him... Uh, Make take his shot. You, you're up, Fred. It's your time, and you'll get three minutes. We'll start the timer right now. Uh, thank you for. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> it's good. Uh, I tend to get emotional at weddings, funerals, baptisms, and we'll see about uh, retirements here in a minute. Um, so working for the citizens of Anacortes has been the highlight of my uh, working career. Uh, I tried to think of one word that would sum up, um, you know, my career here, and I came up with rewarding. It's been uh, work, working here for the citizens, the mayors, and the various city councils of Anacortes has been the most rewarding years of my career. One of the things, if you know me, uh, I like to start off staff meetings or discussions with a fr lots, there's lots of Fredisms, but the one, I, the one that I like to say is, if I'm the smartest person in the room, we've got a problem, okay? And so um, the successes in public works, the things that we've been able to accomplish are really about the smart people in the room, and I'd like to thank some of those that are here with me. Um, I want to thank Becky and the staff at the wastewater plant, keeping that aging plant working in award-winning form. I want to thank Brian and the staff at the water treatment plant. What an amazing team, giving clear quality water 24-7, uh, 365. I want to thank Terry and the water distribution crew. Without them and their ingenuity, the Crayley fiber optics in the water line would not have happened. I want to thank Will Ludeman and Shelley and Mac and all the staff at Operations, the most energetic and dedicated team that I have ever worked with. I want to thank Tim Holman and the staff in the Engineering Division. You've all got your hands full, and I could just tell Tim, just call me, buddy, because you're going you're gonna to need to. Yep. I, I want to thank Rob Hoxie, the smartest GIS asset management person in the county. And I want to thank Russ Pittis for his almost four decades of service to the City of Anacortes and Public Works. And I especially want to thank Nicole Tesh. Uh, she is the most exemplary manager I've, I've had the chance to work with. She's been my right hand for many years. And last, I want to thank Mayor Maxwell, Mayor Gear, and Mayor Miller, three of the seven mayors that I've got the privilege of working with in my career and all of the different city councils and makeups that I've had in, 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 in the years. I, and I want to thank you for the confidence that you've had in the Public Works Department. And that confidence has allowed us to accomplish many things. So thank you. And that's it. Thanks.
Okay, so there's one last little presento that I'm going to give you and uh, from your staff that apparently um, this, the way they related to me, this is the only time that you're going to get your way. So come on up here. <laughs> uh, I still I get to work for four more, never mind. <laughs> Okay, with uh, no further business tonight, please uh, I'll adjourn the meeting, but please hang out and uh, say congratulations to Fred. Thank you very much. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>